Well, some beautiful pictures there, of course, in the lead up to the Winter Olympic Games over in Vancouver. Just over 100 days away we are, but it must seem a lifetime away for the Aussie bobsled team who continue to do some track work down on Sydney's northern beaches. But first, they've got a big task ahead of them. They have to qualify as individuals to get on the team, and then they have to qualify as a team in order to compete in Vancouver. Emily Barker caught up with the Aussie bobsled team. It's a sport that has high risk, high reward, and it certainly captures the imagination of everyone. When you talk about the first exposure to the ice, horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. You cannot have any appreciation for the forces, the noise, the sense of exposure, the sense of helplessness. Well, the first time I was in a bobsleigh, the, the most surprising thing was how rough it was. The jolts and the hits you get are quite heavy. That experience was totally overwhelming. You get towards the bottom of the run and you go, why am I here? Why is this happening? And will this please finish? It's, it's only 30 seconds after you finish it, you go, yeah, let's do this again. Oh! It's the original extreme sport of the Winter Olympics. And these four athletes are training for their ticket to ride. Jeremy Rolston is a former rugby union player, while Duncan Harvey and Anthony Ryan have both competed nationally in athletics. Stuart Trevallion is a tactical operations officer with the New South Wales Police Force. He was discovered through the Talent ID program. It's not even something I even thought of. Um, I've often through my life thought, wouldn't it be great to be a professional athlete or a, an elite athlete in some area? Um, never really had a chance to do that, but to have this opportunity, it, I guess it was a, a matter again of preparedness meets an opportunity. On a bob team you'll find a pilot responsible for steering and a brakeman responsible for stopping plus two extra pushes in the four-man event. Jeremy's the pilot. He competed in the two-man event in Torino four years ago. As a pilot he makes around 60 movements in the 60 seconds it takes to complete the 1.6 kilometre track. The best way I can describe it is it's actually like driving a billy cart. So literally I will have two ropes attached to two D-rings and if I pull the left rope the front runners will move just like a billy cart. And what perhaps people don't realise is when they see sleds going down it looks very simple but they might not realise how much we do. Um, you know I would probably, the sled would crash maybe on corner two or three if I didn't do anything. They don't just go down. The squad's intense training program includes sprint work and heavy, heavy weight training. The boys squat up to 250 kilograms and leg press double that. You want to be heavy as a bobsled push athlete because anything you don't weigh, you've got to push in the sled. So a lighter athlete will push a heavier sled, heavier athlete puts a, pushes a lighter sled, which means you can push it faster generally. The other thing is you're overcoming the inertia of a possibly 200 kilogram sled. You can't be weak to do that. You've got to have a lot of leg strength to push through that over the first sort of 30, 40 metres. When I went from football to athletics, all my coaches were saying you've got to lose some weight and lean up a little bit. So I was constantly trying to get my weight down. They said you've got to get under 90, which I couldn't do. I got down to, I think I was racing 93, 94. And then um, I got on a bobsled and it was instantly, you've got to be 100 straight away. You need to be 100 kilograms. They also practice twice a week with a push sled. It looks a bit strange, but it's a usual off-season technique for many of the top international teams. Plenty of the best teams in the world have sleds just like that, and we copied that sled off some of the sleds that we saw the best teams in the world have, and it, it makes a big difference. It means we actually can train here and train well. Explosive speed, strength, and power alone aren't enough to make you an Olympic-level slider. Yep. Teamwork, technique, and yep. tactics are equally important. It looks like it's purely a, a, 
push the heck out of it, drive, drive, drive sport, but if you get your body in the wrong position, you can't use the power and the speed you've got effectively. As soon as you can't do that, everything goes out the window and you can't push as well. And with great power comes great responsibility, and that's instilled in the man up the front. If we don't have trust for Jeremy, the pilot, then the whole thing can break down. And so once we have that trust, it just becomes a nothing. It's, it's, it happens. You know, we, we push as hard as we can, we load, and then he does his job, and he does his job well. In a sport like this, danger is ever present, especially given sleds can reach speeds of up to 150 kilometres an hour. If you've ever sat up in the, on the back of a sled and you put your head up and you realise how close the walls are to your head and how fast you're actually going, you know, imagine doing 140 on a freeway but bring the walls of the freeway so they're only half a metre from your head. That's kind of, yeah, it's not something I'm interested in doing. Australia has been competing at the Olympic Games since 1988, but Nawazi men's team has finished better than 20th. Modern science, technology and money have turned bobsleigh into a man-powered version of Formula One, with equipment playing such a huge role. It's an expensive sport. Sleighs themselves can cost more than $100,000. Now our Australian bobsleigh athletes get very little funding and often have to support themselves, whereas countries like Germany have an $8 million bobsleigh budget. I just paid about $50,000 of my own money for the foreman to be built with some equipment. You know, and again, that comes out of your own pocket. That's a house. But it's not all about the money. It's about that elusive goal of representing Australia in Vancouver. I'm not going and putting all this effort in to get the same result. We want to do significantly better. Um, I want people in Australia to see um, how amazing the athletes are in bobsleigh and the sacrifices that they make. Um, I want to do myself proud because this is the last time and really enjoy the journey. You can just imagine post-Olympics having been part of it and just sitting on the lounge and putting your feet up. So that's done, you know, what else am I going to do, or what else do I need to do, I'm happy. Emily Barker there with the Australian bobsled team, and Kenny, aren't they big units? They are, and uh, you know, I mean, the power is obvious what they need, but the real problem they have, all of them, is when you actually jump into the bobsled. If there's going to be a problem, that is usually the one that causes the most amount of grief, but they are big lads. Well, You'd rather feed them for a day than a week. <laughs> That's right. What was remarkable how technical the sport is, when yeah. you saw the underneath footage there of how they're driving the bobsled, and speeds of up to 150 kilometres an hour, tip on the side, your head's grinding on cement basically, yeah. that's what the ice feels like. I mean, it's a serious sport. Well, like a lot of elite sports, you know, they're all brave in, uh, in, in particular areas, but that when you're talking about speed and the concrete uh, level of the ice, yeah, it is a brave sport. But look, you know, I know you get pretty excited when you, the medals came around, when they yep. decided, listen, we're going to show the medals for the Olympics. Um, I would imagine as an athlete, it's a, it's a pretty good moment for you to know what you're, you're striving for. Well, you know you're really getting close to the Olympic Games when the medals are unveiled. And look at the size of these things. They're absolutely huge. I think gold's going up as a commodity at the moment, so you wouldn't mind getting a hand on one of those. But certainly as an athlete, I know when the medals came out, you, you look on the news, you want to see what they look like, and it sort of starts to build the excitement and the hype and coming into the Olympic Games. Yeah, 500 to 576 grams. So they are rather large. Maybe it'll need the bobsleigh team to lift them out of there. Uh, Vancouver 2010, the Olympic Winter Games. 17 days live coverage from Wide World of Sports. All begins February 13. I can't wait for it. It will be fabulous pictures, fabulous competition. It's going to be absolutely huge, Kenny. I can't wait to get over there. 17 days of great competition. Okay, right after the break, we'll be back.